doesn't say I'm recording yet. Now it's just recording. All right. One of the reasons we care about monoidal categories is that we can define monoid objects. So a monoid object in a monoidal category is a triple. So what is it? We need some data, and the data is m mu. And I used iota. So m is an object in the category. Mu is a map from the object tensor itself to the object. And iota is a map from the one object, the unit object, to m. So we might call this multiplication, and we might call this unit. All right, so we've set some data, and now we need some properties that it satisfies. So it has to satisfy some diagrams. Like I said, we have lots of diagrams. Um, so we sort of are trying to replicate the um, what it means to be a monoid, so a monoid in the category of sets, say. Um, so we want a diagram that does associativity, because that's a, one of the things that you expect a monoid to have. So let's see. We use the associator to move the brackets here. And then we do the identity tensor the multiplication. And here we do the multiplication. Here we do the multiplication. And here we do the multiplication tensor the identity. <coughs> so this is saying that I can do the multiplication either way. Um, so this is, this is associativity. And we want this thing to be a unit. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this diagram commutes. So 1 tensor m m tensor m, m tensor 1, m. So as part of our monoidal category, we have a left unitor, a right unitor, which is rho, not p. Uh, then we have multiplication. So we want to do the unit map, iota, tensoring with the identity. And we want to say, essentially, that tensoring with the identity, like doing the unit map and then doing multiplication is the same thing as just like ignoring the one. Yes. Greek for R, yes. All right. Then we have the identity tensor uh, iota. All right. So a monoid object is this data satisfying these diagrams. So let's talk about some examples. Uh, in set with product and singleton, a monoid is a monoid object. Uh, in the category of topological spaces with product and the singleton, uh, we have a topological monoid. So what's that? That's a topological space together with a multiplication. So you need to go, you need to be able to multiply two elements in your space to get another element in the space. That multiplication needs to be associative, and there needs to be an element in the topological space such that multiplication with it is the identity. And those maps need to be continuous. Yes. Yes, because soon we will talk about uh, group objects, and then we will see that example. All right, so in the category of vector spaces with tensor over the ground field, and the field is a unit. Uh, a monoid object is a 
an F algebra. So if you've seen algebras before, it's this is an F vector space with a multiplication on it. <coughs> um, and satisfying some rules, which are encoded in the fact that all the maps in these diagrams have to, in this case, be maps of vector spaces. Um, so in the category of abelian groups, we have tensoring over Z, and Z is a unit. Uh, a monoid object is a ring. So you can use this to encode what it means to be a ring in the category of abelian, in the category of abelian groups. Okay. In the category of monoids, again with product and the terminal monoid, a monoid object in the category of monoids is a commutative monoid. Um, this is due to something that unfortunately I don't have time to talk about today, but it's um, Ekman Hilton something. All right. So those are some examples. Uh, if this monoidal category <coughs> is symmetric, then uh, a monoid object, so this triple, is a commutative monoid object if now we have another diagram that needs to commute. So m tensor m, m tensor m, and m. And the point is, I want to be able to twist this via the braiding, which in this case is symmetric braiding. Uh, and I want the multiplication to. The point is, I can flip this around and multiply, and it's the same as just multiplying. Uh, so it's literally saying commutative, if you think about this in the category of sets. All right. Uh, change cameras. All right. So let's see the category with finite products. Um, then recall that we have a monoidal category on that, which has the product as tensor and the terminal object as um, unit. if you have finite products, because the terminal object is the empty product. A group, cat, uh, group object in C is a quadruple. So again, we have some data. That data is four things. It's an object a multiplication, a unit, and inverse. I'm going to use sigma. OK, so I want g mu iota to be a monoid object. So they have to satisfy these diagrams. Um, and further, I want sigma to be a map from the object to itself, which uh, I'm going to call inverse. Right, so we already had associativity, multiplication, and the unit. Um, and now to make a group, we need inverses. So <coughs> um, we have the following diagram needs to commute. So we have G to 
g cross g to g cross g, g cross g, 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 terminal object, terminal object, maps this way, this way. OK, what do we need? We need this to be the diagonal map, this to be the diagonal map. This is going to be do inverse on one side and identity on the other side. This is going to be the other way around. And this is multiplication. This is going to be the unit map. So uh, this diagonal map is the reason why I'm doing this in a category with finite products rather than in a general monoidal category. So you need a specific type of monoidal category in order to be able to describe a monoid object, a group object. Whereas with a monoid, monoid object, whereas you could have a monoid object in any monoidal category. Um, so what is this delta map? Well, it's the map that we get by noting that you can take the identity on G as legs of a cone over G cross G. And so this is the diagonal map. In the category of sets, this is, or this is sort of the obvious thing, which is you take G and you send it to G comma G. So if you think about it in sets, you send G to G comma G. And then on one of those, you turn it into G inverse. And on the other, you keep G. And then when you multiply them, you should get the, ident the unit. All right. So examples are um, in set with product and terminal object is a group. In top, again with product and the terminal topological space, is a topological group. So this is the same as a topological monoid. We had a unit. We had multiplication. But now, for each, uh, each point in the space, there's another point that you multiply with it to get back to the identity. And all of these maps are continuous. So the inverse map is continuous. And the, like, these, these maps are all have to be continuous maps. All right. And in the category of groups, again, with product, and the trivial group, a group object is an abelian group. Sort of for the same reason that a monoid object in the category of, monoidal of, in the category of monoids is a commutative monoid. But I'm not going to explain that. Sorry? Um, yeah, I, I sort of. I've looked at it before, but I didn't have time to prepare it, so I'm not going to. OK. Uh, maybe I'll well, what do I want to use? Um, maybe I'm going to erase the group object. Yeah. So you can also ask for a commutative group object by imposing this, this same condition. Um, uh, because, because as we showed, this um, th like product is symmetric by the sort of big diagram I had here earlier. All right, I'm going to, do people mind if I erase from here? From group object? No? So recall that there was another way of building a monoidal category that we said, which is if you have finite coproducts. And then you take the coproduct as tensor and the initial object as your unit. Um, then a cogroup object. Uh, let's see. So we have, again, G, and I'm going to say eta, epsilon, 
and omega. So G is an object in the category. Eta is going to be a map from G to the coproduct of G with itself. Epsilon is going to be from G to the initial object. And omega is going to be a map from G to itself. And so I would call this co-multiplication. I would call this co-inverse. And I would call it, sorry, I would call this co-unit. And I would call this co-inverse. <coughs> and it needs to satisfy some things. And I really am just turning around all of the arrows in the, in the definition I had for um, group object. So uh, it has to be a co-monoid. So I have co-associativity. And co-associativity looks like this. So I use my co-multiplication. I use the same here. Here I keep an identity on one side and use co-multiplication on the other. And here I do it the other way around. So that's co-associativity. And then I want some co-unit thing to, to, to compare to this. Um, so I, I'll do g, g co-product g, g co-product the initial, initial object, and the initial object co-product g. And here I have the inverse of the right unitor. Here I have the inverse of the left unitor. Um, this is going to be my co-multiplication. And this is going to be the identity together with the co-unit. And this is going to be the co-unit with the identity. All right. So now, just with this, I've described a co-monoid object. Uh, and now I need to do the opposite of that big di diagram I had before. So I have g to g coproduct g, g coproduct g, and g, g coproduct g, and g. Then I want the initial object where I have the terminal object. And now I have maps like this. So this is co-multiplication. I've got my co-units here. And then I've got co-inverse with identity and the fold map and the identity with co-inverse and the fold map. So again, this doesn't work for just any monoidal category. It needs to be the one with finite co-products because I want this fold map. So what's this fold map? Well, it's you get it the same way that you got the you got the um, diagonal map. So I'm going to take g and g coproduct g. And I have maps from g into there. And now if I put the identity on here, it induces a map by the universal property of the coproduct. It induces a map in the other direction. And this is the fold map. If you think about it in the category of sets, this is a disjoint union of this one copy of this one set. And so you just do the identity on this, on the, this side and the identity on that side. Um, but it's, it's just I've flipped around the diagram that I used to describe the diagonal map. OK. Uh, there are other algebraic structures we can encode. But for now, we will end on some algebraic topology. <coughs> and now I have two pages left. No, no, a page and a half. That's not so bad. Uh, what's is it? Oh, so the co-associativity diagram is um, like because we're dealing with like the co-products, um, the associators sort of like unimportant. Like, like um, the associator is is like a canonical isomorphism. Um, for the same reason that we can just do x cross y cross z, we can do x coproduct y coproduct z without worrying about parentheses. So yes, I am sliding something under the rug here, but um, it's not so important. Let's go to the other side. All right. So. We've previously talked about homotopy 
of paths. Um, we're going to talk about a different notion of homotopy, uh, which is uh, a homotopy of maps between topological spaces. Um, so the difference is that when we talk about like a homotopy of paths, we're fixing endpoints. Um, and so it's like a more constrained version of homotopy between, um, between spaces. All right, so if we have uh, maps F and G from X to Y in the category of topological spaces, uh, they are homotopic if there exists a, continue, a map in the category of topological spaces we'll call H from x cross the interval to y uh, in top, so continuous, such that uh, h x of 0 is equal to f of x, and h uh, x of 1 is equal to g of x. So when we did homotopy of paths, we had some extra endpoint conditions that aren't here. Um, so uh, this is, so we write F homotopic to G, and this is an equivalence relation on the uh, set of maps from between any two topological spaces. Um, so uh, we say that X and Y are a homotopy equivalent if there exist maps f from x to y and g from y to x such that uh, g composed with f is homotopic to the identity on x and f composed with g is homotopic to the identity on y. So it's a weaker version of homeomorphism. If we were asking for homeomorphism, we would ask for these to be equal. But I'm just asking for them to be equal up to homotopy. So the homotopy category of topological spaces for which we write home top has as objects topological spaces. So it has the same objects as the category top. But for morphisms, uh, so HOTOP from x to y, we write square bracket xy. And this is going to be homotopy classes of maps x to y in top. OK, so I said this is an equivalence relation, so we can, um, we can do that. That's a little bit misleading, because we might have more isomorphisms than we did before. Um, and so things might go bad. Uh, so in Yossi's talk, he talk, spoke about localization with respect to some collection of things. This is localization with respect to homotopy equivalence. Um, so we have the same we have the same notion of homotopy in the category of pointed topological spaces, but but we use H from X smash the interval plus an extra base point to Y to say what a homotopy is from, from some map uh, but between two maps, f and g. Um, but otherwise, this, these conditions are the same. All right. So now we want to talk about some, so I've just said what a cogroup object is, and I wrote that up for a reason. Um, so S0 cannot be a 
cogroup object. And the reason for this is a cogroup object in Hotop. It's pointed. And the reason for this is that there are three choices of map from S0 to S0, wedge S0. So wedge is the co-product in the category of pointed topological spaces. It's like disjoint union, except you attach the two base points together. S0 is three points, one of which is a base point. It is two points, one of which is a base point. So if you smash two copies of it together, you have four points, and then you attach the base points. And so there are three choices of maps here. Like there are three different maps of this form. Uh, none of them can s satisfy the co-associativity axiom. So if you pick any of the three maps, the, any of the three different choices of maps here, and try to make this diagram commute, you can't. It doesn't. All right. So however, we have the following is a group object. It's, sorry, it's a co-group object. So S1, the one sphere, together with map C, Pi V is a cogroup object in the homotopy category of pointed topological spaces. So what are these things? Well, S1 is a circle. C has to be from S1 to S1 wedge S1. OK, so now. We're doing this in the, um, in, yeah, so for a cogroup object, we do it in the, in, the mon on, in the monoidal structure where tensor is coproduct and initial object is the unit. So pi needs to be a map from S1 to the initial pointed topological space, which is just a point. So this map is entirely determined already. We don't need to say anything about it. And V has to be a map from S1 to S1, which you should think of as inverse. All right, so what are these maps? C takes a circle to a wedge sum of circles. So it's going to do this. We're going to have, yes. Uh, so it's going to do half the circle like this. And then the other half like this. And it's going to do send it to circle, wedge, circle. And it's going to do it like this. It does one circle first, and then the other circle second. All right. So that's one of these maps. And then the other map is going to do the circle in reverse. So. You can think about this map as reflecting the circle down the middle. It sends this point to, wait, it sends, yeah, it sends this point to this point. That's V, yes. OK, so maybe we should, I better switch these things. So I can, I can, I can quickly justify these diagrams. Uh, let's see, which ones did I want to quickly say something about? So if you, so doing, doing this associativity is um, you do, you, so the associativity, you've got like three circles at the end, the wedge sum of three circles. You go one, two, three, and you sort of, do these two at four times speed and this one at double speed, or you do these two at double speed, at four times speed, and this one at double speed. But those two maps are homotopic. This is why we needed homotopy, because they are not co associative in the category of topological spaces, but up to homotopy, they are co associative maps. Um, 
OK, and then let's see. What's the other one? Um, if you do, if you, let's see, if you do the unit one, you want to start from the circle. You want to go to uh, the circle following the, so you do, you do half of this here and half of it here. And then if you go this way, you, you are doing the, um, the co-unit and the identity on the other one. So it, it does one, and then it squishes this second part into here. Um, and so that says, this going this way says, do this at double speed. And then when you get to here, just be constant on the end there. So, and then this is supposed to be the left uniter, which in this case is the identity. Um, and again, these are not equal maps, but they are homotopic maps. Doing, just going around the circle at full speed, at like one speed, is the same thing as going around the circle at double speed and then waiting at the end for the last half of the interval. So that's sort of a quick justification of some of these diagrams. I'm not going to do all of them. Um, now, now, the fact that this is a co-group object tells us something. Uh, we have this representable functor, which I'm going to uh, leadingly call pi 1, which goes from, which, which, is, a which is a representable functor for S1 in the category of homotopy, in the homotopy category of spaces, it's a set. All right, so it takes, it takes a space to homotopy classes of maps from S1 into that space, which is a set. This functor factors through uh, the category of groups. And it does so because S1x C star, pi star, V star is a group object in set. So it's a group. So this is a group object in set. And we'll, we, can, we can see this via one of the diagrams. So we want to show, say, associativity, that this thing satisfies associativity. Well, we have. S1 X, we have S1 wedge S1 X. This is asking for continuous maps from the wedge of two circles into a space, but that's the same thing as specific, because these are base topological spaces, that's the same thing as just asking for a map from one circle, from two separate circles into the thing. So this is the same thing as. S1 maps from S1 into X cross maps from S1 into X. And so the same, I have the same thing here, S1 wedge S1 X. And here I have S1 wedge S1 X cross S1 X. And here I have S1 X cross S1 wedge S1 X. All right, then if I go this way, I'm doing the identity cross C star, which is precomposition with C. So right, to get from these maps to there, here. Um, so like the upper star ind indicates I'm doing something contravariantly. And then I have the same thing here, sort of from here, oh, sorry, from here to here, I do precomposition with C. Here I do the same thing. And here I have C star um, cross the identity. Uh, right, because this is also a copy of this. 
Um, and I can sort of do this with all of these diagrams where I turn these into contravariant versions of themselves. And so that tells me that this is a cogroup, this is a group object. So in particular, this tells me that pi 1 of a space is a group. The fact, the fact that, 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 that um, the fact that the circle with these maps is a cogroup object tells me that um, homotopy, a cogroup object in the homotopy category of topological spaces tells me that um, the fundamental group is a group, yes. Yes. OK. That's, I mean, it's a, it's a homotopy invariant. Yeah. All right. Um, OK, so the last things I wanted to say were uh, similarly, if you take Sn, and I'm not going to say what the maps are, because uh, I don't know off the top of my head, although they shouldn't be too hard to say anyway. Um, similarly, Sn is a co-commutative co-group object in, uh, in the homotopy category of topological pointed topological spaces for n greater than or equal to 2. So pi n of x, which is homotopy classes of maps from Sn into x, is an abelian group. Again, you, can, you, you, you take the diagrams that you have from this being a co-commutative co-group object, and you dualize them to, to, to show that this thing is a commutative group object in the category of sets, and so is a commutative group. All right, and that's everything I had to say today. Thanks, guys.